Hello, and today we're going to be working with uh, enzymes, uh, specifically the enzyme catalyst and how it uh, reacts and interacts with uh, hydrogen peroxide. Uh, for this lab, uh, we're going to have three different types of tests. We're going to do a control test, uh, then we'll do a test where we change the temperature of our hydrogen peroxide, and then a t test where we put our potato in different pHs uh, before adding it to the hydrogen peroxide. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started first with our control part. Uh, so for this part, we're going to take uh, two mil, approximately two milliliters or one pipe, pipette full of hydrogen peroxide and put it into each one of these three graduated cylinders. So we'll start with just about two milliliters in each one of these graduated cylinders. Uh, we want about the same amount in each one. Uh, then to each one, we're going to add about one milliliter of water. I'll do that and then catch you once we get that added. So now we're adding our last one milliliter of water. So now we have two milliliters of hydrogen peroxide, uh, one milliliter of water. Next we're going to add in a small slice of our potato. Uh, we're just going to use this little knife here and cut off about 0.5 grams. So I'm just going to cut each uh, bigger, bigger chunk up and from that bigger chunk then I'm going to cut it down and cut that into a much smaller slice. Uh, we'll put it on our scale over here and we see it's about 0.67. Uh, if we want to, we could trim that off just a little bit more to get it down to about half a gram. And we'll do that for three different pieces. Uh, we want to get it close enough. If we're within 0.1, that's close enough for this lab. Uh, so I'm going to just slice off a little more and get it just under 0.6. I'll do that for two others and then meet you back at the test tube. So now that we have our potatoes cut and our hydrogen peroxide and water in our test tubes, uh, we're just going to add in our potatoes and then start our timer. Uh, again, this can take a little time. Uh, this is going to be our baseline. So our observation, this is going to be our baseline of about a 5 for reactivity. So our reactivity is going to be about 5 for this one. So you can see we get some bubbling on each one. Uh, it's enough bubbling to cloudy up our uh, appearance of our hydrogen peroxide. So we'll hit fast forward, uh, let it run, and time lap and catch you in a little bit. So now that it's been about 12 and a half minutes, we can see our enzyme activity uh, has decreased drastically. Uh, so we're going to stop it here as we move on to our next section. This segment, uh, we will be doing setting up our test tubes the same way as we did last time. Uh, two milliliters of hydrogen peroxide in each one of our test tubes. Uh, we have a total of six test tubes. I've already filled out uh, the first three and just refilled our next three. Uh, then we'll add one milliliter of water to each test tube uh, and then we'll place three of the test tubes in a hot water bath and then three of the test tubes in an ice bath. Uh, we'll give it about five minutes in the hot water, about ten minutes in the uh, ice and then we'll get you as we relocate them. So like we said we're going to put three of them in the hot water bath. One, two, and three. And then three of them in the ice bath. Uh, we'll give them some time to heat up and cool down. And then uh, test it with our, while we're doing that, we'll cut out our potatoes. And then test them with the potatoes and see how the callus uh, behaves. Uh, so now we're going to remove our test tubes from the hot water bath. Uh, after we remove all three, then we're going to add in our potatoes. So I'm just going to remove all three. And then immediately add in our potatoes and start our timer for the reactivity. So again, we want to compare this to the reactivity of our first sample. Our first sample, our control, our room temperature one, 
uh, that was uh, controlled to kind of compare against. Uh, these appear to be moving or reacting a little bit quicker. We get a little more bubbling, a little quicker bubbling in these ones. Uh, but again, we'll time it and see how long it takes as well. Uh, but for again our, reg, our rating, our first one that was our baseline of five. Uh, so if it's greater than, if it's more reactive, if you think this is more reactive, uh, on a scale of zero to ten, it's going to be higher than five. If you think it's more reactive, uh, if you think it's less reactive, it's going to be less than five. And then if you think it's the same as it was initially, then that would uh, rank a five again. Uh, again, this is your ranking. Uh, set your score uh, we'll let it continue to react and continue to bubble uh, and then catch you when it's finishing up and move on to our ice bath so in this case after about two and a half minutes uh, we're at 227 right now uh we're starting to see kind of at the same spot we were with our initial one we're starting to stop bubbling uh, we still have a few last ones uh bubbling up but we're starting to have that decrease in bubbling uh so we're looking at probably about 245 to three minutes uh, uh complete bubble time for all three of a hot water bath uh, we'll get those cleared out and then we'll move on to our cold water bath. So I'll move these over and get moving. So now we're removing our test tubes from the cold water bath. Again, we got three test tubes. Uh, as soon as we move them, uh, we'll set up and drop in our potato into each one of these cold water baths. Uh, once we drop them all in, we'll start our timer and see how long it takes. Uh, for it to stop bubbling. So again, we want to compare that reactivity to our initial control, that first test we did. Uh, if it's bubbling more, uh, we'll give it a, a rating higher than 5. If it's bubbling less, we give it a rating less than 5. Uh, if it's bubbling about the same, we'd give it a score, a rating of 5. Uh, so we want that comparison. Again, that's on a scale of 0 to 10. Uh, we'll let it react and then uh, catch it one once we start seeing the bubbling disappear. For our last test, we're going to be testing the effect of pH on the catalase enzyme found in these potatoes. Uh, for our low pH or so, uh, acidic condition, we're going to use vinegar. For a high pH or basic condition, we're going to use sodium hydroxide. Uh, to get started, we're just going to put three of each of our potato pieces into uh, the vinegar and then three into our base, our sodium hydroxide. Uh, we'll let each one sit there for about five minutes. Uh, while that's going on, we'll set up our test tubes, same way as we did before, uh, so we can complete our tests. Uh, so now it's been about five minutes. Uh, we're going to start with our vinegar, our low uh, pH uh, acidic condition. Uh, I'm just going to grab a piece of potato out and then put it into my test tube, and I'll do that for each one of these. And if we look, we can check out the reactivity. Uh, if you're looking, we don't see much in the way of bubbling uh, after the potato's been sitting in our vinegar. Uh, so we're not going to be able to get a time on these because we don't have any bubbling. Uh, if we're trying to rate it on a scale of 0 to 10, uh, this could end up being right at that 0 if we don't have any bubbles at all. Uh, so again, that was your vinegar. Uh, your acidic conditions uh, as we take the catalase enzyme and put it into the hydrogen peroxide. Next we'll do our basic condition, our sodium hydroxide. Uh, again, these have been sitting there for about five minutes, uh, maybe six now. Uh, and we're going to, again, just like with our vinegar, take the potato out. Uh, you can see it's changed color a little bit and then drop it into our hydrogen peroxide. And we'll do all three of them. And then we'll take a closer look after we've done all three. So now that we got all three of them in, uh, we can see 
if we're comparing it to our enzyme activity initially, uh, compared to the control, it's much, much slower. If we look closely, we do have a little bit of bubbling here in this first one. Uh, if we're looking at the second one, there's really no bubbling taking place. And our third one as well has no bubbling, but the first one does have a little bit of bubbling, a little bit of catalyst activity taking place. Uh, we'll let it sit and observe. Uh, and if it looks like it's going to stop, we'll keep our clock running. I got a timer going uh, with that time on it, so we can check out that time if we need to. Uh, but we'll let it sit. It's not very reactive. So again, this is going to be a low score, uh, probably like a 1 or a 2 in our reactivity. As we let it sit, uh, you can see it's still bubbling very, very slowly. Uh, second one actually started to bubble as well. If we look closely, we can get some bubbles on that one as well. Uh, and then the third one just now started to bubble. Uh, if we want to wait till the end, it's probably going to be over a day till we get to our final time. So we're not going to worry too much about our time on these. Uh, we'll worry more about our reactivity. So the vinegar over here had no reactivity we had no bubbling we still have no bubbling uh our control condition was uh five score where it was uh reacting uh and gave us some pretty intense bubble then we go to our basic condition our high ph and we got very very low uh catalyst enzyme activity very few bubbles for them. uh thank you so hopefully you were able to see in this uh catalyst enzyme at, uh, lab activity uh, how temperature and pH can uh, affect the enzyme activity. Uh, first, we looked at temperature. Uh, we saw at the colder temperature for a catalase, uh, it had a low activity. It still had some activity, but it had a low activity. Uh, room temperature, it had some activity, and then it had even higher activity after it was in the hot party bath. Uh, then we looked at different pH levels by putting the potato into different conditions. Uh, we saw the acidic condition of the vinegar uh, caused the potato to be, the catalyst enzyme to uh, not be reactive when we didn't get our reaction of the hydrogen peroxide. And then the basic condition of our sodium hydroxide also decreased the activity greatly. We still had a little bit of acti activity, uh, but decreased it greatly. So it needs more of a neutral pH. Uh, thank you for watching, and hopefully you learned a little on uh, enzymes.